The STO process is going to be interesting because it's going to open a lot of avenues for us to really focus on improved instruction, which is the whole impetus for the new uh, evaluation model for the state. The SGO process is going to be accountability for all teachers, not just the non-tested area teachers, but all teachers are going to have to have SGOs. The SGOs are going to be a way for teachers to um, observe, monitor, obtain data on how all of their students are progressing throughout the year. Uh, it's going to add rigor to their classrooms. It's going to open the uh, lines of communication for instructional discussions with peers and the building administrators and the district administrators because all of us are going to have to be involved in the creation of the SGOs, the monitoring of their progress, any tweaks that need to be done before the February 15th date, and then the final evaluation of the data once we see how our kids are improving. And we have to remember that SGOs are set up to monitor growth, not to set limits, not to try to set standards, but to take each individual child that you have in your class, assess where they are at the beginning of your class, and then monitor their growth throughout your class so that you can document. The good thing for the teachers is in our new evaluation model, it's going to give them an opportunity to have evidence to historically mark where their children were when they started and where they ended so that they're going to have evidence of the growth in their classroom. It'll be very helpful for their new McCrell uh, evaluation tool. The support process uh, is going to begin at the district level. The district is already meeting over the summer, depending on when you're watching this. Um, the district is already meeting over the summer to put in place uh, ways that we can support the principals who then can support their staff members. Uh, the SGOs are going to be um, set up like boiler plates for the district so the teachers aren't left on their own to come up with ideas but they're going to be open and free enough that those teachers that want to take the initiative to delve a little deeper and, and demand a little bit more of themselves will have the flexibility within the boilerplates to, to individualize the SGOs. But along with that, every district administrator, the supervisors of curriculum, and the building principals are going to be there every step of the way to help the teachers develop the SGOs, help them monitor the growth, make changes where needed, and make sure that rigor is involved in the SGO themselves. Principals are going to be evaluated based on how their teachers meet their SGOs. So it's going to be imperative for the principals and the district administrators to support the staff in making sure that they, number one, set attainable student growth objectives, and then help the teachers to make any adjustments as those models are monitored. We have to understand that this is based on a national model. We've gone through as educators, and especially those of us that have been around for a while, we've gone through the cycle of ideas. This is a little bit different. This is a national model. National um, funding is being based on the new uh, core curriculum and, and model curriculum and the park assessment. We're not going to see this go away, and that's a good thing. The basis of it for, for us as educators is to improve instruction. And the SGO process, not just in this first year as we work through the capacity issues and the new evaluation system, but as we really look at the instruction going forward year to year, we're going to not only be able to see our students' uh, deficiencies and areas that we need to help and support them, but we're going to be able to identify individualized professional development for each of our staff members. We're going to take a look at where historically our students are successful and where historically our students in our own individual classrooms are having deficiencies. That's going to be eye-opener for our educators to start to look at themselves to uh, introspect in how they are performing their craft in the classroom and start to really open the discussion. Peers are going to be able to help each other. If I'm strong in one area, I can share my ex expertise and activities that I use to make sure my students are successful. And if I know that I'm not strong in an area, I can seek out one of my peers that is strong in that area, and they'll have the data to support that they are good at that specific topic. I think it's just going to open up the educational, instructional discussion that we haven't had. Our evaluation process in the past 
has not encouraged uh, instructional dialogue. It hasn't encouraged the sharing of best practices within our classrooms in our own buildings. We're always looking outside for best practices when we know we have best practices in our district. This way we're going to be supporting one another using data to identify areas where we can be uh, focused on growth for ourselves professionally and where we can share our professional knowledge with others. If you have any questions or need any support in beginning the STO process, whether you're a principal or a teacher, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. I'll be here all summer and I'll be available to you all fall. You have till November 15th to have them signed off by your principal. So if I can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. I uh, really look forward to the process. I really think that once we get through the initial headaches and bumps and bruises of getting it started, uh, we're all going to see as educators that it makes us better. So I'm excited for the process. I'm excited to work with all of you. Hope you have a great school year.